Well, hey there, idiots. Welcome back to Observe. In today's video, we're going to be analyzing the nonverbal communication of Johnny in relation to the Colleen Ballinger situation. We've already done a video on him once before. This is a little different. I'll explain more right after the intro. Okay, before diving into the actual content and the backstory of all of this video, I want to be able to make a fun announcement. I have released memberships for the Observe channel here. If you want to be able to hit that button, you would gain access to different badges for how long you've been a member. You will also have access to some different emojis that are channel specific, some gifts that are channel specific. So again, if that's something that's of interest to you, I appreciate it very much. And you can check it out down in the button section down there. But uh, now, continuing back on to our actual content, Johnny Silvestri, he came out with a video in regards to Colleen and her behaviors, and we did an analysis of that. Now, Swoop has done an interview with Johnny, and it was a six-hour interview, and many people have requested that I take a look at this one, because as it turns out, Johnny, while he may have been telling the truth about Colleen, is not himself necessarily a great human being. So we're gonna take a look at this interview, See what we can see non-verbally about it. I did reach out to Swoop to see if I could get access to the full six-hour interview, but they were not able to get back to me in time and the creation of this video. So I'm working with what they were able to put into their four-hour documentary over at their channel. And I've taken all of the bits and pieces of this interview that I can find and pieced it together as best as I can so that we can look at it today. But you will notice that it is fairly chopped up, so just keep that in mind. That does make it a little bit more difficult for accuracy's sake to not be able to gather that surrounding nonverbal information. But there's still plenty to be able to get from this, so let's go ahead and without further ado, dive right in. Can you tell me about how many times you would estimate that you hung out with Josh uh, in person? He would say stuff to me like, Oh my God, come to California, uh, come to California for my show. And I'd be like, are you serious? And he'd be like, yeah, come on down. And I'd be like, whoa, sick. You can ask anybody. He would be like, oh yeah, me and Johnny, we're going to take over the world. We're going to make it big together someday. This guy is so cool and so selfless. Like what a good person. Do you still have, I'm just yeah. curious, do you still have uh, your text conversations? Gonna go ahead and pause that before he answers this next question. So something that I do want to make note of is that the Josh person is in regards to Colleen and so he's being invited by Josh to go to these different shows, which is cool. And I understand that. So the issue that starts coming up here, which we'll be able to see this more as it develops throughout the interview, is Johnny's perception of himself as opposed to the people that he's around. So here we have a, a fairly famous YouTuber asking a fan to be able to be like, yeah, why don't you come to a show? That would be great. And being kind, saying things that are questionable, like the oh, we'll take over the world and stuff together, like that sort of side of things. However, none of what Josh has presented, according to Johnny here, is unusual behavior. And it's not out of the ordinary. It's just a, a person being kind to a fan. But there is more that goes into this. Uh, now let's just keep watching this. Conversations with Josh? That I can check because my old MacBook Pro revived itself. If I move it a little bit it shuts off completely and i have to move quick and in small segments so i really really wanted to get the choline information the meat and potatoes i remember gonna go ahead and pause there this is an interesting response to this question do you still have access to the texts between you and josh and he does initially a smile and tilts his head to the side so that smile, maybe it could be something in the long, along the lines of duping delight or duper's delight. I don't know that that's the case there. However, what I do find fascinating right after that is how he begins to immediately pack the answer that he just gave to Swoop. And it adds all these different details in there about how his computer, you'd move it and it does this and that and this and that. And I had to focus on this and I had to do that instead of that. And it just strikes me as fascinating. Now, that packing of an answer is an indicator of nervousness or agitation around that question. Now, that could be for deceit. That could be just out of nerves in general. In this area, I do believe that it's indicating deceit, largely because also throughout the rest of the documentary, he also has instances of being able to easily retrieve certain items of information that he wants to from this supposed broken computer. So this feels like he's making an excuse 
to not have these texts available. So that is a little low-level red flag here right at the very, very beginning, but there is quite a bit of footage to go through, so let's just keep going. I remember it was around 2013 starting to see this Adam kid pop up. So he was getting this access to Colleen Ballinger and all of us online by going under his parents' nose. I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. Now Johnny has grouped himself in with Colleen Ballinger and all of us. So this grouping, this is another indicator of what Johnny perceives himself as, perceives his value in this group and where he fits in with things. So he's already letting us know a little bit psychologically as to what his perception of things was. Perhaps it wasn't how everybody else was viewing it, but it is how he has viewed it. And this isn't something that seems to be out of the ordinary for Johnny's perception of things. We'll be able to point that out in a little bit. So we, as a 15, 16 year old, I didn't want to be talking to a nine or 10 year old. So we just kind of picked on him for being so young. And I say bully because I, Hannah, my heart, I, I in, was involved in mean stuff. But when it comes... Okay, so during this time, when he's referring to the age difference between him and Adam, you see a bit of disgust, obviously, coming to the corner of his nose, talking about the age difference between them. And then after that, he's talking about doing not so kind things, picking on a younger kid, and then he's saying bully. And I say bully because... And he goes through this entire detailed explanation as to what he perceives he has done or what he perceives was done. And it's all centered around this very distasteful sort of behavior towards somebody just because of their age, which in and of itself is not a really great character point for Johnny, but it's not the worst thing that anybody has done. It's just not that great. And then along with that, we're seeing that he's having a lot of difficulty saying these things as he's having a lot of halts in his phrasings. And then along with that, we're seeing some lip compressions and no shakes in there as well as he's really having difficulty saying, yeah, I was pretty much a terrible person to this other person because they were younger than me. And that's just how I roll. And so this is just really letting us understand a little bit more about what Johnny's character actually is. Now, this has nothing to do with his testimony about Colleen Ballinger. This is its own thing. This is now focusing on Johnny. So let's keep watching this. I, when it comes to Adam, personally, I don't really think I partook. Even when me and him spoke on the phone for the first time last month, he even said he really didn't feel like I was invested in the bullying. If he wanted to be a part of the tiny chats, we never gave him the information for it. We'd be like, ew, a kid. And then we'd kick him out and be like, no. And then she'd swoop into his DMs and be like, hey, Adam, hey, bestie, which is, mm -hmm. it's just, it's so bad. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause here. I don't have a lot of certainty in Johnny's recollection of how he treated Adam largely because even at the very end of his own recollection of what Adam said to him, it ends with this trailing upwards of tone and indicator of uncertainty. So that doesn't encourage a lot of confidence in what Johnny's saying. And now he goes to start describing how Colleen would come in and be like, okay, so we would kick the kid out because he's a kid. And yes, we may have bullied him some, but you know, that's just how things are. And so we would kick the kid out and then Colleen would come in and swoop in and she would be like, hey, bestie and blah, blah, blah. And then Johnny tries to kind of divert the attention from him doing a rather crappy thing to another person. To really, let's again focus on Colleen and about how Colleen was being weird in this situation. Now, chances are everybody was not doing super great in this situation. And this really does become more and more apparent as you go through at least this video. If you do have the time, I do suggest you go and watch the video over on Swoop. They do a lot of unpacking of details around it, including pictures of receipts and interviews, blah, blah, blah. The whole thing. Go check that out. But in regards to what we're seeing so far, we're getting a more and more clear mindset as to who Johnny is, not the least of which is that he's willing to put other people into discomfort for the sake of his own happiness or self-perception. So this is just something that we we'll want to be able to understand about him as we continue forward. Bad. Because like maybe we could have protected Adam a little bit if we did befriend him. When he when he had given you his phone number, what what was that like at the time? Um, just real quick, this is obviously switching around to a different por portion of the interview. I don't believe that Johnny ever once had it even in, in crossing his mind to want to protect Adam. I don't think that Johnny really considered anybody else outside of himself in regards to all of this. You'll see a bit more of why that is in a little bit, but just want to make that note. Now we're going to be talking about 
a different situation between Josh and Johnny again. At the time, it was very surreal. I remember him handing me back the crowd. I feel like I remember him saying something like, use this whatever you feel like you need to or something like that. And my attention that night on diverted over to Josh. I was more of a Josh fan than a Colleen Miranda fan. I was still heavily involved in the fandom, but Josh gave me so much attention, attention that Colleen didn't really give me. So I felt like, hey, if I could at least be closer to him, since I'm not super close to her. Do you remember what the... I'm going to go ahead and pause there again. So we're hearing again what is important to Johnny in regards to this. He's saying that on this night that Josh gave him his phone number. Big moment. That part, I do actually kind of believe the flow of that. He didn't seem to have any issues verbally. He didn't seem to have any issues non-verbally. It just seemed to be him recollecting the instances of Josh giving him his phone number. And then he starts talking about this switch that he had in his mind from being a fan of Colleen's over to being a fan, more of a fan of Josh's. And the reason for that is because Josh gave him more attention that Colleen didn't. And so what this is also able to be understood as is that Josh was being more nice to a fan than Colleen was being nice to a fan. And because of that, Johnny went ahead and latched a little bit more on to Josh. Now, this isn't anything that has to do negatively with Josh. It doesn't have to do negatively with anything. It just lets us know what is important to Johnny and his goal line here. And it so far, he, he's letting us know that he's willing to put others down and he's seeking after attention in regards to this. So this is a very uh, egocentric move of Johnny all the way throughout. Let's keep watching. The conversation was that you were having with him right before he put his number in a crown. They were just signing the crown. We were all about to leave. That's around the moment. I'm pretty sure Colleen said something about queefing. And my dad was like, what did she just say? And I was like, oh, my God, I have Joshua's phone number. Really heard my or really hope my dad didn't just hear Colleen say queef. OK, and so. I, I guess I didn't realize that this was that your parents uh, were or at least your dad was there with you at the time that he was writing his phone number in the crown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm more clear. I guess I don't know how I, I missed it that your your family was there. Did yes. your parents, did they know that he had given uh, you his number? He gave me the crown, gave me that little nod of affirmation. My first initial response was, I don't want the other people to see that I just got this phone number because then everybody's going to flock and try to get it from me or like steal this crown. When did your parents uh, learn that you had uh, got his phone number? I like held it close and I like double checked to like make sure and I... I think I even like showed my parents and stuff and I think in their minds they were just like holy shit like our kid is doing the damn thing okay so maybe school didn't work out for him but like maybe he's meant for something maybe he's gonna do something maybe Josh can be a mentor this was my ticket to success my ticket to happiness no one could take it away from me they're gonna gonna go ahead and pause that there so now we're hearing the story about how the phone number was handed across during this time I, again, am not actually picking up on any overt red flags from Johnny as far as desynchronization or anything slipping through his facade that he's put on for the camera and interview. It seems as though he's telling the truth about this recollection of how the phone number exchange happened. Now, what's important to note is that his family was right there. Why that's important to note is this is all centered around Johnny uh, claiming that he was groomed. And so we're trying to understand some of the, the factors around that, the environment around that, and not the least of which is this large move of the phone number being given over, being done so in the presence of the parents as well. So it's not like it was an isolated incident where Josh had pulled Johnny off to the side and said, hey, here's this. It was unique from what we're understanding from Johnny's tale here is that he didn't give his phone number out to a whole pile of people. It was just to Johnny. But it was still done very publicly. So this is something that we just need to be able to make note of in regards to that. And now we also hear this little line from Johnny again that this, this whole thing, instead of looking at, and looking at it as if it was a personable re relationship or anything along those lines, he's talking about how it's his ticket to fame and happiness and blah, blah, blah. And he's not going to let it go. And he's viewing all of this as... It, as, as something that he's able to take. And so this is really painting it out very, very clearly in our minds what Johnny's mindset is. And so far, it's just an extremely egotistical mindset 
but there's a lot of footage still to be able to comb through. So we're going to go ahead and continue on through that. We're just really gathering a lot of information here. Wait for me. They're going to be like, oh no, Johnny was in DMs with minors. I was, I'll be the first person to, to say it. I, I was in the group that originally was a Colleen group chat that I had been added in. My friend who I am not friends with it uh, anymore overtook that and created the group where he decided to start grooming teenage girls on the internet. You know, there were also chat rooms or DMs that I was uh, added to during tour. And it was tricky because I didn't want to be in DMs with a bunch of teenage girls. Like I was, you know, confident in my sexuality. If anything, I want boys, well, men to be in my- Gonna go ahead and pause there because this is just an important place to be able to pause. So he's talking about these group chats and in these group chats, the, the reason that this is such a controversial point is because oftentimes, one, there were minors mixed in with the groups and adults. And so like that's already, uh, it's already a sensitive area to be able to work and you have to be careful. And apparently inappropriate content and, and conversations were regularly held in these group chats of which Johnny partook. And so this is another area where people are like, well, Johnny's Johnny's blaming while doing behavior that seems to be the very behavior that he's blaming everybody else on. So this is a red flag. Now, something else that I want to make note of that he did verbally here is he's talking about, yeah, and it was a, it was a touchy situation because I didn't want to be in a group chat with all these teenage girls. And it sounds almost like he's on the right track of saying, yeah, I don't want to be a part of a group chat that's just teenage fans would be it. But that's not, that's not Johnny. Johnny says, I don't want to be in the group chat with all these teenage girls. If anything, I want boys. Catches themselves and says, men. Oopsie poopsie. That's a pretty substantial verbal slip up there. Now, it could be because he just said girls before and now he's saying boys because of his sexuality. However, I still think it's important to be able to note that he is still qualifying teenager in this. He doesn't want to be with the teenage girls. He wants to be with, assuming the flow of sentence here, teenage boys. Then he sees, oh, that's... That's a rough way to say that. Men. I meant men. And so like with that, that part of things, it makes me feel a little bit uncertain about his motives. And we're just being able to add all of these different things to what our understanding is of Johnny himself. Let's keep watching. Well, men to be in my DM, the fans were honestly like a safety net at the end of the day, because when we'd wrap up a day of work and I'd be walking to the bus and I'd see all of these people who were excited to see me after I'm just sitting around people who I feel like can barely stand to have me in a room with them. Having people who supported me and liked me meant the world. There's three I can think of. One of them, actually. You know, I pop in from time to time because- I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. Again, we're talking about something that is gaining Johnny more attention. And that seems to be his big focus point. Now, one of my things that I was thinking while going through this is, well, perhaps maybe Johnny has some difficulty accepting his own self-worth so he's validating it by any external source and perhaps on some level that's true however there are other areas of this narrative of this interview itself that really allow us to kind of see what what sort of character he has in regards to his viewing of people and their worth and their value in regards to certain things and we'll see that in a second however we're hearing here again the fans the only importance that fans had to johnny it was that they gave him more attention, which is, again, just adding more context to this character. Let's keep going. The time, because it was fun. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, this is like a, a weird world to be in. Like, I have fans now. Like, who am I to not say hi? Or like, it was an ego boost. That applause, people shouting your name, screaming for you. I was like, whoa. And so I was getting added into these DMs. And if I'd pop in and just say, you know, hey, thanks for the support, everyone would freak out. And I'd be like, oh, that was fun. Colleen and uh, Corey. All right, going to go ahead and pause that there. So then again, we're hearing more and more instances of a very, very important, crucial driving point to Johnny is how much attention people can give him. And this is of all forms, even up to the uproarious praise of the crowds screaming his name or what have you. He's very into that. That's what his drive is. And this continues to pop up in various areas again and again and again throughout Johnny's narrative, which is very clearly painting a picture for us of his character 
throughout all of this. Now, let's just keep watching. Corey warned me. They said, don't interact with the fans too much. In hindsight, I can say now I could have justified it and been like, well, I'm an adult. I don't want to. I shouldn't be in these rooms. The whole reason I shouldn't be in these rooms, nevertheless, in the moment of, as an adult, still looked at the situation and thought to themselves, oh, well, these are underage people and I am a person of a level of influence now, so I'm still going to interact with them in possibly not okay ways. Let's keep watching. And I'm coming out with my stories is because it's inappropriate for adults to be friends with children. Can you tell me about... So he himself just says it's inappropriate for adults to be friends with children. Nevertheless, he also acknowledges that when he was an adult, he was trying to be friends with children or at least on friendly terms with children. It is a level of hypocrisy on his side, but... There's plenty left of this to go, so let's keep watching. How many times you would estimate that you hung out with Josh uh, in person? Yes. No, when I say hang out, I don't want people to have this perception like I was chilling in his living room. We would be in public places. He would be doing something, some show, and I was going as a supporter. He would say stuff to me like, come to California for my show. And I'd be like, are you serious? And he'd be like, yeah, come on down. And I'd be like, whoa, sick. He would allude to things like that. Like, I'd be like, okay, you know, I'll come to California. So I know we already touched on this earlier in this interview. Again, this is very cut up and I did my best to be able to find the actual narrative throughout the interview. But from what I'm hearing, even again painted out in this dynamic, it sounds as if Josh and Colleen, these people, these YouTubers are functioning as if YouTube is their job and their shows are their job. And Johnny is, is a fan still kind of coming into support, maybe a closer fan or a known fan, but still a fan that's coming in to be supportive and be there. And so there is still that level of understanding that one person is there because it's their job, they're required to, and because they love doing it, they created this for themselves, and that's them. And then there's Johnny kind of riding coattails, which is okay, except for where we're about to get around to. So let's keep watching. I'll come see your show. We should grab a coffee or something while I'm out there. And he'd be like, yeah, for sure. There was one instance where I had got out for his show that he encouraged me to go to. I was having a lot of trouble getting a rental car. The two and a half hours I spent at Hertz, I had called Josh. I had called Colleen. I had texted each of them. I'm stuck in LA. I need to be in Irvine tonight to see your show that you encouraged me to come to. Can somebody pick me up? I had invited my friend friend at the time to go see the show with me. Improv at the Irvine Spectrum here in California. Colleen, Trisha Paytas, Jenna Marble, Shane Dawson, all these like A-list YouTubers pile in and sit at a table right in front of us. And then she looks at me and she goes, oh my God, you made it. I was so worried about you. They were going to go on and start this show. She was just going to sit with Shane and Trish and have a fantastic night watching her hubby mope on stage about how he was stuck in her shadows while little Johnny was trapped over by LAX. So I'm going to go ahead and pause that there again to revisit what we're talking about. We're talking about A-list YouTubers doing their job, doing a show that they created off of their own talents, off of their own creativity, regardless of how we're feeling about each individual YouTuber. That's what is happening there. Johnny is a fan who was invited, and he's expecting... The group of YouTubers doing their job to not do their job, to hold the entire show so that the one fan can be picked up from the airport. And that's absolutely ridiculous. That will never happen that way. It can't happen that way because believe it or not, it's more than just the people on the stage. There are other people that have jobs, other people that have timelines that they have to stick to. So it could not happen that all of these YouTubers would be like, you know what? Pause. Did you hear about this fan Johnny at the airport? Oh my goodness, he's still, he's over by LAX and we should not do any show until we can get him in a seat. It's a very, very unrealistic approach to this entire social functioning that Johnny specifically is having. He again is relating so much weight and importance to his existence in these social, social circles, despite there not really actually being the need for him to be in there. 
So we're seeing a very clear picture of Johnny's overly inflated perception of himself and how it comes to play in his social workings. It's really letting us understand that it seems as though Johnny will go to any extent to be able to get the attention that he feels he deserves or that he wants. And even through this interview, we've seen time and time again that he will actually push boundaries to do that. So let's keep watching. Did you ever hang out with Josh just one on one alone with Josh? I can at least count on two separate occasions. There was the one where we had our little coffee date at Starbucks when I went to the auto show to visit him. That was just me and him. There was also a time he was doing a show in Wisconsin. He was in a band called The Cat's Pajamas. So I surprised him. Me and my family, even the night we had. Going to go ahead and pause there. We're seeing a lot of disgust and dismissal coming from Johnny in regards to Josh. Jo Johnny does not look at Josh kindly. It's it's mainly, mainly showing up in the hooded eyelids, the flutter blinking, and the disgust in the corners of the nose as he's talking about these various things that him and Josh would interact with. And also just a little thing that was made note of by Swoop in the documentary that I'll also make note of. Neither of these two instances that Johnny has proposed here are actually instances that him and Josh were fully alone. It was always in a public space, public setting with other people around. So there is also that side of things. However, we're about to get to this part here that we're getting to see a little bit more context as to how Johnny and even Johnny's family views people's worth. Let's see. Even the night we had dinner, my parents were just razzling him a little bit and they were like, so when are you gonna put a ring on it? And he was like, soon, I promise. I just want to be the main breadwinner and da 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 da. And me and my parents and my sister were kind of like, do you know who you're marrying? Like, like she's like in her prime right now on YouTube and no offense, dude, but you're selling cars at the Chicago auto show. He actively going to go ahead and pause it there because here we're seeing very clearly what is important to Johnny. And if we're going to take Johnny's word for it, the rest of his family as well. As they're talking to Josh and pushing Josh to put a ring on it, aka Mary Colleen, which is inappropriate for any external person to do. Just don't, don't, don't pressure anybody in that area. Not only that, their response to him wanting to be able to earn enough money to be the main breadwinner is to have disgust. You could see that playing across his face as he's recollecting this moment that his family had, and then this telling of. You realize that, she, you know, who you're who you're in a relationship with, she makes so much money. And, dude, you only work at the Chicago Auto Show, which I did a little bit of research. The people on there, some of the upper salesmen on there can make upwards of one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year. So it's not like it's a cheap job to work at. However, according to Johnny, he sees and has discussed towards Josh in relation to Colleen, because Colleen makes more money, she's in her prime, she's more famous, all of these things that Johnny worships, whereas Josh is just a car salesman. So this is letting us know more and more and more just what is important to Johnny, and perhaps it's not even just from Johnny. It could have been something that he grew up in an environment of. Very, very interesting perspective to be able to gain. Let's keep watching. He actively chose to remain in this relationship. He had so many out. He didn't propose for like nine years. Why did you enter a marriage that was so toxic if you knew it was so bad? You must have wanted something out of it and it bit you in the ass. He fucked around and found out and now he's just upset about it. <laughs> At this point, I don't care that he was a victim because we're not talking about that story anymore. If he wanted to talk about that story, he had every opportunity in 2016. You have going to go ahead and pause that there. So there was a number of allegations in regards to the dynamic between Colleen and Josh. Not a healthy situation. Not well handled online. Along with that, Johnny is trying to make the excuse of, well, Josh could have easily gotten out of it if he didn't like that. And that just shows a level of a misunderstanding around abuse situations. So he goes through a, a series of victim blaming towards Josh. And then at the very end, we're hearing another statement that is extremely telling. And it's this, well, I don't even care if he's a victim. He looks down in a way. Perhaps this is something that he knows is controversial to say, a.k.a. stupid to say. But he says, I don't even care. And he looks down, does a dry swallow. And then he continues on, you know, because if Josh wanted to say something, he could have done that way back in 2016. And we're talking about other stuff now. And so, again, 
what we're seeing in Johnny's mind is that it's not the importance of the individual. It's the importance of the intention that you can get from the individual. Johnny is exclusively trying to capitalize on everybody else's attention and rake in as much as he can for himself. And this swoop documentary went a very long ways to exposing exactly how he does that. Let's keep watching. I've obviously said uh, that you believe that Josh groomed you. Yes. Can you just... Give me a summary of exactly what Josh did that has made you feel that way. Josh has an ego, a massive one, and it's one that I can pinpoint and address, not even knowing the dude on a personal level to this day. He took the power that he had over me and it turned into this God complex where I think to this day, he has this skewed idea that he was being a mentor. He was a dude. I'm going to go ahead and pause here. There's so many things that are just difficult um, for me to acknowledge here. Non-verbally, it's a little difficult to be able to say anything that Johnny has been doing differently here or out of sync or anything along those lines, especially just because of the cuts that are littered about in here. However, what we're hearing in his narrative is a number of things. He's asked, so what was done to you that made you feel like you were groomed? He answers without answering anything. He says, well, I think that the other person had an ego. I think the other person had a gone, God complex. I think this and I think that about the other person doesn't actually answer anything tangibly about what could have been done towards him that gave him this feeling. So he says that. He also says that he did not know Josh on any level. However, earlier in the very interview that we're listening to here, he does mention that he did know Josh on many levels, even down to the point of his family and Josh all having dinner together and chatting like that there, that in and of itself is another discrepancy in his storyline. And then along with that, at the very, very end, he's starting to talk about Josh's power dynamic and how there was an abuse of that in that situation, which is exactly what Johnny has been accused of himself. Just a very fascinating thing. We're hearing some of these areas where it, it's it, there's discrepancies, like I said, between what he said earlier and different times. So his story's not lining up. And we're also being able to very clearly hear a character develop behind this story of what's very important to Johnny. Let's keep watching. It was a dude pushing 30 who leached on to a vulnerable kid when he was in town. We did the Harlem Shake video. We filmed a little goofy, stupid video for my channel. There was a contest he did once. There were like maybe eight of us who submitted videos. I won and my prize was a ball of duct tape. It's just the little things if you look at them and see the patterns. Again, if you could gonna go ahead and pause here because swoop is about to ask again okay so you've you've gone on this enormous tangent about everything else except for what josh did to you to make you feel like you were being groomed so she's gonna address that again in a second because he didn't answer the question the first time around but what i want to make note of again is that during this time it sounds very similar to a youtuber who has a super fan that they're being kind to now should josh have allowed johnny to be involved in his life to that degree absolutely not no but we're not talking about that side of things we're talking about johnny here and with johnny's perception of things johnny walks into the space and has such an overtly elevated perception of his own self-worth that he expects things from these people that are doing their own thing so it's a gift that Josh did a video with Johnny. Johnny did not deserve the video with Josh. The competition thingy where the, the prize is a ball of duct tape. Okay, that is a competition and nobody deserves a specific value cash prize or whatever for a competition. It can be a ball of duct tape. It could be a dusty shoe. Nobody cares really, but to Johnny, it's offensive because he's worth so much more than that. And he needs more attention than that. And he needs more value than that. And if you're not going to offer it to him, well, then you're useless to him. Mm, it's, it's just rubbing me the wrong way a lot. And this, this entire narrative has, has been difficult for me to keep a level head as I'm continuing forward because I get very frustrated with people like this. However, let's hear him address this question for the second time. And if you could, if you, I'm sorry for asking a second time, no, uh, a but just I just want to kind of nail down exactly specifically what you think were the kind of the exact things that Josh did that leave you feeling like you were groomed. Yeah. So 
first and foremost, giving a 16 year old your phone number, I'm provoked, having conversations about our personal lives, getting to know me on an intimate level. Back Pausing. Okay. Phone number. We've already talked about. Yes, that could have been a questionable move. I, I, I can understand where people would be like, well, why would a YouTuber give a fan their phone number? That is fascinating to be sure. Again, though, we are saying we are understanding that the parents were right there. Everybody was in the know. So it's not necessarily this isolation factor that Johnny's trying to paint it out to be. And then right, right here, we just had Johnny talking about how him and Josh got to know each other on a very detailed level, whereas earlier in this very same interview, he said he didn't even know the guy. So again, we're having another area where Johnny has lied in one point or another, whichever one it is. And each time that he says something, it seems as though it's only built up to fit the specific narrative that he's talking about at the, at the time that he's talking, meaning he's just a bad liar. In this one singular interview, there have been so many discrepancies between his own narrative of just saying the exact opposite things at different times. Very fascinating. Let's keep watching. Well, fast forwarding to today, I feel more confident to say I was groomed. But not everyone understands that grooming doesn't always have a sexual component to it or a sexual kind of end goal so that it can have different attempts at what it's leading towards. What do you think that Josh was grooming you for? The most disturbing part you would think it would be super disturbing if it was sexual, but that would just be pretty cut and dry. People don't quite understand what grooming is, which is why I appreciated your breakdown. Ugh, I just have to pause here for a second here. Ah, okay. There are a number of things that are happening verbally and non-verbally. Right now, we're seeing the pointer finger come out here, and this pointer finger is a dominating gesture. Nobody really actually points unless they're trying to make a strong point. And to see it coming out in a conversation, it usually just builds a bit of tension in that conversation. So he's pulling that pointer finger out. Along with that, he's now trying to paint out this picture of comparisons of traumas and abuse situations and grooming situations to say one is more important or scary or what have you than the other. And that's disgusting for any person to do. And ironically, again, it's his situation that he himself perceives that he was in is the one that's harder. Let's hear. Down of it in the first segment, I actually highlighted that and posted it on TikTok. It could solely be for power, which to me sounds so much more disturbing. I mean, sexually is horrific, but just for no motive other than power and boredom, that is almost more disturbing than having a very set and stone motive behind what you're doing. Because I cannot confidently say what Joshua's motive was. Kind of a realization for me, right? So there you have it. He's trying to say again that this perceived idea of grooming, which in the video that Swoop does, they, they break down all of the definitions that go along with this so that you can kind of see one, the, the definitions that Johnny is giving specifically don't necessarily fit the actual definition of grooming however say they did and so we're hearing him again trying to find a way to inflate his own self-importance and ego even in regards to the the possible lies that he's telling about people around him it's very very clear to me what johnny's drive is even going on to this interview and i think it really bit him in the butt pretty hard but let's just see how it continues to play. Kind of a realization for me right now. I didn't really hang out or talk to Coley unless we were talking poorly about someone. When your relationship with Joss uh, came to an end, when did you really pull towards Colleen as a friend? I'm not a kid anymore. They're, t they're already having like adult conversations with me. It was mean, nasty conversations. But to me, the fact that they were having them with me, I was like, Okay, I'm in now. Anytime we'd be talking, she'd say horrible things about other YouTubers, which include people like Gabby Hanna, Nikita Dragon, Manny MUA, to name a few. If we weren't talking shit about her ex-husband, it was about YouTubers. And just for, sorry, just for clarity. So now we're getting some more dynamic from the word of Johnny's mouth as to what him and Colleen were up to. And it sounds as if a lot of their relationship was centered around being terrible people. 
uh, behind the backs of other people. And to me, this is fairly revealing. But along with that, before we talk about why that's fairly revealing, in case it's not completely obvious, we're also hearing this conversation point that Johnny has brought up that he was already in cahoots with both Colleen and Josh. And yes, they were saying mean things, but, but uh, he looked at it as, again, a stepping stone for himself. Well, now I'm in the inner circle, more or less is what he's saying. So he sees another instance of trauma and drama and tragedy and heartbreak as another thing for him to be able to step on to elevate his own self-importance. It's really letting people see that when push comes to shove, Johnny will treat you however Johnny wants to treat you as long as it gets him attention, praise, fame, money, what have you. And that is a very, very clear character sketch of Johnny, let's keep watching. Just for, sorry, just for clarity on that, um, when you would like send a, a photo back, was that of Trisha? Yeah, and usually it was just like, I'll, I, I have one screenshot that I saw that I had sent and it's really just like, Trisha butt ass naked with like a giant smile on her face. And I just... I'm gonna go ahead and pause that there. So <laughs> fascinating thing that Johnny is doing here. He's talking about Trisha now and the sending back of the back and forth of inappropriate photos between him and Colleen. And he's trying to paint this picture of disgust about Trisha towards Swoop. And you could see it coming out in the corner of his nose while he's talking about the big smile on Trisha's face while Trisha is doing a nude photo. And he's, a, he's doing this overt disgust expression hoping that Swoop is going to reflect that, to mirror that so there can be a level of camaraderie on that. Swoop does not at any level reflect that. And now he's about to try to explain what he said underneath and he looks off to the side, which makes me feel like something is off there to the side for him to be able to make note of. And he, for some reason, falls apart with what he says underneath. I find that fascinating. I don't think it's because he doesn't remember what it is. I think it's because when he tried to paint this area of disgust on Trisha and Swoop didn't feed into that, now he doesn't have the certainty to say the nasty thing that he probably sent along with. So we're going to hear him have some verbal stutters and stammers. We're already seeing him breaking eye contact, obviously, to go and reference something. And he's going to have a large amount of difficulty saying what he sent with the picture. So let's just see what that is. I forget exactly what I said, but the caption was just something like, felt cute. I did that because I lot of insecurity and in that had a substantial lip shrug in there, which is akin to having just a normal shrug with your shoulders as well. So we're seeing the lip shrug in there. We're seeing the lowering at the eyebrows and the very difficult time holding eye contact while saying, oh, this is what I wrote. Oh, felt cute. And that's what he just tries to brush it off under the rug with. Again, I don't believe that. Let's keep watching. Because I knew if I was being nasty about somebody that I would get attention. I don't feel great that I used Trish at her expense, but I guess what does help me sleep at night is knowing that I wasn't friends with Trish. She was just this untouchable public figure to me. I, I'm curious to know. Okay, so now we've heard Johnny say verbatim that he knew that he was being nasty to people around him while with these people that he kind of wants to get things from, not the least of which was attention. And so again, we're seeing where Johnny have, has very, very clearly laid out. He will do anything to anyone as long as it makes him feel better about himself. And that will happen at all costs. We'll see this play out a little bit more and then we'll wrap up at the very end. No, at what point did you have the realization that the, the sending of Trisha nudes was inappropriate? There was, I mean, it, the, something always felt wrong morally deep down but i think i was just more excited over the fact that it was a way to create a bond between me and these people well when did when okay so at what point did you realize you're being a terrible person oh i always kind of realized that it was a terrible thing for me to do but i was getting things out of it so that's okay and then afterwards he does a pretty substantial grin and he does a very substantial soothing gesture here. And so those levels of agitation centered around that and then mixed in with the grin there, that does not make me feel like on any level there's remorse or a sense of being sorry for what he's done. 
or even a sense of guilt for what he's done, it seems as though he's looking back fondly as to his own trail that he's blazed here while just throwing everybody that he can under the bus for his own gain. And he seems to be quite fine with it. Let's keep watching. When did when do you think that you maybe it was in the last couple of years? Uh, mm. Did you have a moment where you were like, you know, looking back at the 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 nude photos thing, and you thought, huh, that's actually really wrong? Watching Trisha's video, the difference between all right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause this here again. This has been a couple of years ago that this sending back and forth of the nudes and inappropriate behavior and comments and everything around that, the tearing down of other people in regards specifically to Trisha. It's been a few years, so Swoop even offers him this out, you know, even within the past few years. Was there any times that you felt like the obvious nature of how wrong what you were doing is? And the answer is he didn't even consider it really until Trisha released her own video very recently. Years have passed so that Johnny has been fine with it. And it seems as though it's only when there might be a level of backlash that maybe some of this attention that he loves so much is going to be pulled away or misdirected or tainted in some way that he then realizes, oh, I was being an ass. Shoot, didn't even consider that for the prior few years. There are very little questions in my mind about who Johnny is. Let's keep watching. Difference between her and Colleen's videos were... Colleen made an ass out of herself and thought she was being cute and funny and going to have a little viral moment. Call Trish what you want, but like I felt the authenticity and I felt the hurt. And, Tr uh, yeah, Trisha, she came off devastated. Well, now that now that Trisha, ha what frustrates me is that Johnny is saying, "Yeah, I can tell that Trisha was extremely devastated by the things that were done," without at all acknowledging that he was the one who did them. He's the one at fault here. He's the one who could have fixed this, who could have done something differently. It's his responsibility as well. He refuses to view it that way because that does not inflate his ego on any level. Let's keep watching. Now that Trisha has made a video, Trisha is a victim in this story. I wanted to ask if there might be a time where you might consider taking those tweets down now that they kind of have served their purpose. Some of them did get taken down. That is actually why I was put in Twitter jail, um, because of some of the photos. And I was like, are you effing kidding me? Like, that it just seemed stupid to me because I was like, OK, I get it. But also th these are like crucial to my story. Just hearing your perspective, you're someone I really respect a lot. And so I will say with Trisha, I did have a better idea of how this plays out. I don't think she I don't think I'm going to go ahead and pause again here. This is, this is hard to listen to as Swoop is desperately trying to get Johnny to realize he's being trash. Desperately trying. And Johnny is just not acknowledging it. Or he'll acknowledge that what he's done is something terrible and then that he's more than happy to keep it the way it is because, again, it fits his narrative. He's done terrible things and he will not remove those terrible things because it helps him get attention. And... It's infuriating to me, like very, very infuriating. Here's a final attempt and then we'll, we'll wrap up. I don't think this is bringing her peace, having them out. Yeah, I, I mean, I, like, gosh, I, I didn't think they bring her peace. <laughs> I'll be honest. It was just a piece of all of this. So I saw Trisha's video and I was like, well, that's great. Okay. So big grin there at the end. This could be a defensive gesture. But he's also then verbally saying that, like, he knew that he was being a terrible person to Trisha. Like, he knew that pretty good and well. And he was willing to ignore that he was a terrible person for several years until he started getting flack for it. And then things started to happen. And what you didn't hear from this portion, but in a later interview, very shortly after this swoop interview... He did end up taking down all of these posts and used Swoop's own words of being like, they don't serve purpose anymore, so I just deleted them. Whereas in this interview right here, we hear that he has no intention of doing that. Again, he views everyone around him, every circumstance around him, everything around him as stepping stones for himself.
He's willing to stab people in the back. He's willing to lie. He's willing to manipulate people. He's willing to do anything necessary to be able to elevate his own self importance. For anybody who's hanging out with Johnny, if you are in a position of more wealth, power, or anything that he might see as a potential for you to give him, be very prepared to be used for that. Very, very prepared because it seems as though that's his MO. So this was my little analysis of what I could be able to piece together of the swoop interview here. If you would like to be able to see more centered around this subject, let me know in the comments below and also let me know what it is that you would like to see. Right now, it seems as though it's at a, a pretty decent threshold, but we'll always be keeping our eye on it here. If you do have any other requests as well, I do heavily suggest you go and use the comment section. You could also hop over to the socials and even email if you feel like it. All of those are good ways to be able to get a hold of me. Again, go check out the memberships, but, but without further ado, that's all that I've got for the day. My name is Logan and you have been oh so awesome as you always are. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.